Hey everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. In my previous tutorial, I talked about the benefits of using the AI masking tool, um, particularly for replacing skies. And that works pretty well most of the time, but there are some times when it doesn't work. And in this situation, actually, I'm just this example, I'm going to show you something that is uh, kind of more of a creative photograph. Um, rather than something that would be just a straight replacement of the sky. It's just a different situation. So um, let me just pull up this image here and uh, let me explain to you why in this case the AI uh, masking tool is not going to work as effectively as the one that I did in the previous tutorial. So um, what we're going to do is go into edit and basically what I'll do is, is I want to put in a kind of a, a you know, surreal sky, something that would be more in the line of a kind of a Van Gogh kind of thing rather than just a simple sky replacement. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to use a layer um, with uh, some some imagery to uh, put in as the sky. So based on what I was doing in the last tutorial um, using the AI tool, it would seem that it would be fairly simple to get rid of all of this sky here because it seems like it's pretty much the same wash of color. But let me show you what happens when I try that. So I'm going to go to the masking tool and then choose AI. And then um, as I explained in the last tutorial, there are two modes. There's drop and keep. And uh, drop is basically going to... Um, whatever you select will basically punch a hole in this picture. So um, when I select the sky here um, and all those colors, it will just basically get rid of that so that you can put a, an image underneath it and it will show through. So uh, let me show you what happens here. So the first thing we're going to do is decide what we're going to drop. What are we going to take out of this photograph so that we can put something underneath? So. Um, the theory of using the AI tool is that you can just do these big swaths of, of uh, selections and it will do all the work for you. And I'm just going to uh, select a few colors in here. And like I said, although this seems to be relatively the same color, it actually has a lot of different tones in it, which makes selection, um, even with the AI tool, a little bit tricky. So I'm just literally representing all the different tones I can see by just these small little dots. Um, selections. So in theory everything should be uh, se selected there by the AI tool. So now we're going to choose uh, what we're going to keep and I want to keep the silhouette of the building. So I'm going to select that and I don't need to do much there because it's pretty much black. Um, there is a subtlety here in the church steeple so I'm just going to select that too. And that should be good. So now I'm going to select apply. And it's working here, thinking. Okay, so as I, as we can see, it's done a pretty good job. It's done yeah, a very good job of actually selecting um, the, or at least not selecting the silhouette of the uh, of the house and the steeple, so that's fine. Um, and for the most part on this side, it's done pretty well with the uh, sky selection, except it falls apart here. Um, and the reason for that is that the tones in the sky um, are different, and probably uh, the influence of the branches here, uh, which were kind of blurred out, is making it difficult for that uh, for the AI tool to recognize all of this. Now, you can continue to select in this mode, so um, what I want to do is go back into drop and I, I want to continue to try to see if I can select all of this sky by again just, uh, I'm, I'm avoiding doing big lines because that's going to go over the branches and then that gets complicated, so we really are wa wanting to concentrate on getting rid of the sky at this point only. Um, so, I mean, I could make the brush really smaller, but let's just see what happens here. So, if I apply that, um, you can see it's it's continuing to select, but it's it's kind of getting back into a lot of, of uh, trial and error, which is really not what the AI tool is, is really designed to do. I mean, it will ultimately uh, make your work, uh, the amount of time that you spend on your work less, but it's just messy, and in this case, I'm not actually looking to, to um, apply like a regular sky. I'm, I'm looking to do something creative. So I'm 
I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to scrap this. So I'm going to hit reset. And um, now here's a little thing. You can't do anything else until you get out of this mode, this AI mode. So you need to click on any of, the, of these other buttons. So what I want to do now is I want to find what I'm going to use for the background for the sky. It's not going to be a regular sky. It's going to be something more in a kind of a painterly mode. So I am going to create a new layer by hitting the add layer button here. And I, I'm i already in these extras, um, the on one extras and going to textures. And then I'm going to, um, I think it's photographic. Yeah. And I want to choose this, this bokeh image here and add as a layer. Now it's coming in pretty small because the image here is smaller than the than the photograph that I'm layering it on. So what we'll do is go over to the move tool and then go up to this uh, fill canvas. And when you click on that, it again, theoretically um, brings this to the same uh, size as the underlying uh, layer, but in, it's just a little bit off here. So I'm just going to pull that out slightly and that looks good and then hit apply. Okay. Uh, so what do we do next? Well, um, one thing that I use quite a bit and is, is blending modes on these layers. And I'm really not going to go into what all of the blending layers mean because it's just way beyond the scope of this quick tutorial. Uh, you can find plenty of resources on the web. Um, even with a fairly decent understanding of what these things do, I usually just do experimentation. I try all, all of them to see how it works. So how you get to that is make sure that the uh, the top layer is active, which it is in this case, and then you're going to click on this little uh, cog uh, icon. And that's for the blending options. And then you can uh, go through all these. And you can see instantly that in the darkened area that that looks pretty good. I mean, it's actually keeping all the information for the silhouettes. Um, once you start getting into the lighter modes, that's really not what I'm looking for. The overlay is kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, in the interest of time, uh, multiply is what I've decided I, I would like to use. Now, that's still pretty dark, and I'm not seeing the uh, detail over here on the left. So what I want to do is I want to go into develop, make sure that this layer is, is uh, selected, and I'm going to bring up the shadows. And I'm just going to crank it right up, and that actually looks pretty good to me. All right, so I'm happy with that. Um, at this point, it's time to, well, actually, before I do this, let me just tell you that um, uh, the way that this blending mode works really is nice on, the, on these edges. And let me, uh, I'm gonna go right in here and show you what I mean. So, I mean, that's just, you know, it's the blending is, is amazing on this. These, these fine lines, there's no um, broken uh, selections or anything like that. It really works quite nice. All right. So, um, as in the last tutorial, um, you know, once I've I've kind of blended these layers together, um, I like to create uh, a flattened version of that without getting rid of the original layers, um, because I want to start applying effects to the entire picture. So I will right click on the top layer and choose new stamp layer. And that takes the information of the two bottom layers and combines them into one blended layer, blended at meaning flattened, uh, but it preserves those other two. And you can see that right there. And I'm going to rename this composite. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, go to effects. And um, I'm actually just gonna add a tone enhancer to begin with and maybe bring those shadows up just a little bit more. And the reason I'm doing that is there is a subtle roof line here that's getting a little lost. Um, if I get rid of that, you'll see that you really can't see it. So just bringing up that shadow a bit um, kind of brings that up. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is just add a kind of a, I, I want a little texture in the, in the background sky just to make it more interesting. So I have some uh, filters that I really like. It's going to go to textures. Um, and let's see. 
So I, I bought a bunch of these black ink textures a long time ago, and I do not remember where I got them. But anyway, I really like that first one. You can see the before and the after. Now, the problem with this is it's gotten rid of my little roof line that I just uh, recovered using the tone enhancer. So what do we do? Um, there's lots of different things you can do in terms of how this uh, texture is applied to the underlying image. And uh, you can kind of, if you click on this little cog icon, it reveals um, some more options. You can change various blending, uh, the blending modes. Um, you can apply it to all different types of uh, tonal ranges and color ranges, uh, but that's not what I want to do here. I, you can also s to uh, control the, the way, this is a much kind of a more refined way of, of uh, controlling exactly how it is applied in the tonal areas of the image. So um, this left side means that it's, it's applied to the maximum. Um, when I slide the sliders to the right, they, uh, there is less of an effect on um, that particular tonal range. Like in this case, um, the shadows, if I start pulling, uh, pulling off on that, you can see that information coming back. And the reason that's happening is it's it's actually not applying, or at least the um, the texture effect is um, is a lot less now in the shadows because this is like a volume control, and when you go all the way to the right, um, the volume is is pretty much zero. So it it almost seems a little counterintuitive here um, because the the uh, the number is increasing even though it's kind of representing a zero value. But that's just how I'm looking at it. I'm sure there's a logic to how on one is doing it. So I like it about there. I, I do still want to have a little of that texture there. So I'm just trying to find a, a place where it's good. So I'd say probably around there. Uh, and then as usual, one of the last things I like to add is film grain. And um, I, I actually like how the, um, which one is it, XP? I like how that looks. Uh, at its default and if I click on that you can see um, there is the grain pattern and again like I've said in the previous tutorial make sure that when you add grain that you're looking at the picture at 100% because um, when you're looking at this smaller preview it doesn't necessarily take that grain down proportionally sometimes the grain actually looks a lot bigger um, in the small preview so you can you can accurately see it when you blow it up to 100% so that's pretty much it. I know this is this is a tutorial that probably didn't teach you much more than what I was uh, what I did in the last uh, tu tutorial, but I did want to just show you that sometimes the AI masking tool doesn't work for everything. It is certainly not a one-stop uh, tool, uh, and there are, there are other ways uh, of dealing with the situation where you want to you know, blend different layers. And the blending modes are a great way to uh, just experiment, uh, particularly if you're doing something like this, which you're really not trying to, you know, add a sky with accurate colors. Because uh, with these type of blending modes, um, a lot of them will, um, you know, blend things unevenly or, or, or in an unpredictable way. And so if you're just literally trying to do a sky replacement with a regular sky, you'll find that the blending may be a little funky. So again, it just really comes down to experimentation. Um, and there is always the, uh, the masking tools um, as your, you know, your regular tool to use in situations like that. Anyway, I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, if you like what I'm doing in general, please feel free to uh, subscribe. And uh, if you like this particular tutorial, please uh, hit the like button. Um, I will, uh, I think in general, what I'm doing uh, going into the future really is just trying to look at creating pictures um, rather than focusing on what one little tool does, um, uh, unless there's a particular uh, tool that you know I can really s spend a lot of time uh, doing in a, in a tutorial so um, your feedback is is good on that if you if you would rather see me do um, drilling down into specific tools but for me I kind of like the holistic approach where you just say okay here's an image this is what I want to do how can I do it and I'll, I'll try to show it to you as efficiently as possible everything doesn't have to be 20 minutes or 30 minutes in these tutorials sometimes it's just a quick solution so until next time thanks for watching <laughs>